Hello, we're back. Patch1Stripe.com TV Repair Parts. Today's video is part two of how to repair any Samsung LED TV. We're going to help you repair your TV by a process of parts elimination without using any electronic test equipment at all. Next, we're going to use a voltage ohm meter to show you how to use the voltage legend that's on the power supply to also repair your television and identify the bad part. Next, after you've repaired, you've found the bad part, we're going to show you how to identify the part numbers on all the different components within the within your TV so that you order the correct parts every time. Be sure to visit patch1stripe.com to see our line of repair parts. We have remotes, LED strips, stands, boards, and many other replacement parts. Give us a big thumbs up for this video and also subscribe if you haven't. We also want to say thank you to out there to everybody that's been supporting us so far. And with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get on to this video. Okay, today we have a Samsung UN55JU6500 4K TV. The problem that we're going to simulate is it's a no start, black, nothing's going on, but you have the LED for the uh, power indicator light is blinking red okay it's blinking red all right it won't start up no picture no sound okay now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify this problem by process of part elimination and to do so what we're going to do is, like we do with all Samsung TVs, that's LED late model TV, we disconnect this lead connector from the power supply board, from the main board, excuse me. And we're going to plug up the, the television, and if the power board is okay, and the LED strips is okay, well, the backlight should come on. Now, when we're looking for the backlight to come on, we're looking for like little places like here, here, sometimes little holes like here. You're gonna see some light come through up here. You'll see some little light come through right here. Uh, well, just, just a hint, just to let you know that the back backlight has came on okay so let's keep your eye on this we'll look at this one right here just keep your eye on it you see see it lit up I'm gonna take it take it out unplug it again okay now I'm gonna plug it up now watch here see so what this is letting me know is that the power supply is okay and the backlights are fine so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. Okay, so I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to plug this main board back to the power supply. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to isolate some of these other components that are not necessary to make the backlight come on. Cause that's the backlight is gonna be our key 
as far as when we're troubleshooting this. If the backlight comes on or it doesn't come on. Okay, so up here what we have is the Wi-Fi module. And it has a lead coming there going to this antenna. Real, real nice deal they did now to have an extended antenna. Well, we don't need this for the TV to start up. So let's get rid of this, okay? Now, and let's do this. We're going to take this FFC cable off, and that's going to eliminate the LCD panel, T-Con board, and the FCC cable. Okay? Now, also, we, we can leave the speakers on, whether because a speaker, when a speaker go out, it's, it, it reads, like if you want to check a speaker, check a, to check a speaker, you put your voltage on meter on ohms, and then you check across the yellow and the black here, the red and the black here. And I'll show you. And it'll it'll read whatever the speaker is. Let me get a good connection here. Let's try this one. Let's go at it from another. Let's go at it from another angle here. Okay, hanging that with me. Almost need another hand. Okay, this is a 6 ohm speaker here, and it's reading 5.4, which that's cool. Okay, so we know that speaker is good. And the same thing to the other side. But if, if you're not getting any sound over here, and you go with the ohm meter, and you're not getting a reading, you're just getting this showing up, that speaker is bad. Okay, we'll throw that one in for the day. All right, so what we're going to do now is with all this disconnected and if the main board is good, backlight should come on, okay? So let's go back here to our little spot right here. Hope you can see it and you got, you got it right there to see if the backlight will come on. Now we're going to turn it on. I'm going to use a remote to do that. You saw that? Backlight came on. Now this right here, this is just my infrared uh, detector or optic. So I'm just using my remote. So I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to cut it on. See? So, what that would let me know is this board is good because it's gone out and said, come on, power supply, turn on. And it's turning on and you're getting your backlight. So, this is good and this is good. Okay? So, in the to go back over what I just described is the scenario. The scenario is the infrared LED is flashing, you know, which is the power indicator, but we have no startup, no, it's not powering up, uh, no video, no sound. 
Okay, now the, the alternate uh, scenario for this, what I'm setting up here is the, your IR module LED is not on at all. So you either got the, the LED is not on or it's blinking. Okay, so I'm going to unplug this from the power supply. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hook up the T-Con board. Okay. And we're going to see what we have there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to plug apply power to the power supply board. And let's see what we have. Okay, you see it? Your lights on. So what that what does that let us know? All this is good. That's not what's shutting this board down. And a matter of a matter of fact, in this condition, on the other side of here, I can see a I can see a picture. So that lets you know. This set, it'll operate without the Wi-Fi, okay? And by me having a good picture, I know the LCD panel is good, all that good stuff. So the only thing that we have now that could, could possibly be holding this set out, it could be this Wi-Fi module. So I'm going to take away the power from the power supply board. And I'm going to plug this up. I'm going to plug the Wi-Fi up now. And we're going to see what we got. Ah, look at there. See your lights on? And a matter of fact, I got video over there. Right? So, actually, everything is good. So, if you've been following me, you're probably going to say, well, well, Tara, what was the problem? Well, it wasn't a problem. This is a brand new set, and I just wanted to go through this process of elimination with you guys to show you how it works. Okay, if you had a problem. So, to recap what we did, and I don't think we need to recap, but you always want to start with disconnecting this lead connector from the power supply. And we're going to leave this LEDs connected. It's the only thing we want to do. And we want to see if we get these backlights. We get the backlights, mm, we on our way. Because now we got something to indicate to us what's working, what's not. What I had to disconnect, what I, you know what I'm saying? So look, look, going back over this little section, what I last did. Let's go a little bit further with that. So, when I, when I just plug this up, if we didn't get backlight or picture, well, I know the problem is from here on to the LCD panel, okay? So, to verify that, what I, what I would do next, and not to verify, to continue troubleshooting, what I would do next is, okay, let's see if it's actually the T-Con board, or it's actually the LCD panel. So what I would do, I'm gonna take the powers off. I would take, you can see me snap, just snap these up and take these out. And I'd reapply power and our light should still come on.
there it is there it is okay so now with that move there that'll let me know from the t-con board on back is fine it's working now we need to go further and further is going to mean looking at further is going to mean looking at these ribbon strips to be sure you don't have any burnt spots on them and and be sure they're okay and also it's going to mean looking at some of these components which here's an IC there's an IC some capacitors and resistors on this address board that connects to the LCD panel some of those guys may be burnt I had a, uh, a subscriber lately he changed the board several times he changed the power supply he changed the T-con he couldn't get get the set up and going and then finally we went down to the board this P printed circuit board for the uh, the address panel for the LCD and they had some burnt components on there now at home at uh, patch1stripe.com we have some of these address printed circuit boards for a good variety of different models for that for in particular cases like this when you have a burnt component and you need to just go ahead and replace it when you have the expertise and you your skill level is up to some surface mount soldering okay so this a burnt component on your address PCB or printed circuit board doesn't mean the end of the world in a lot of cases if you want to go that level of things okay and uh, another thing let's check this voltage right here on this fuse look at there 12 volts 12 volts I've had situations where somehow some sort of surge hit this board and knocked out that fuse didn't damage the board but it knocked out that fuse I replaced this surface mount fuse and repair the TV okay now when you're getting 12 I'm on 12 I'm on volts DC when you're getting voltage here one side and you're getting voltage on this side that let you know this fuse is good so you know in all your business of trying to repair a set there's some something if you're using a voltage on meter you're proficient with it just check it anyway just check it anyway. You know, you never know what you might trip up on. Okay? Now, while we have the meter up, uh, let's go to the second phase of this video that I promise you guys I talked to uh, some of the uh, I guess more proficient uh, subscribers uh, with the uh, voltage ohm meter now one thing that you you can check is on a power supply to be sure that uh, it's working is uh, voltage excuse me it's voltage and what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna make a voltage check with this unit plugged in to our AC power okay basically what we're gonna be doing is it's almost like a a re-engineering type thing what I want to show you 
on this working TV what key voltages should look like on in the off position and what those same key voltages should be when the unit is on and that way if you ever have to do some type of troubleshooting to actually verify that the main board is good you can revisit this video and uh, it'll help you out to uh, check the check for the right things and check for the right voltages in the right places although some power supplies will vary but your typical thing is the standby voltage that's the main thing the standby voltage should be 8 volts when the TV is plugged up in the off position and we go right here to this voltage regulator there you go 8 part 9 this is the other one 8 part 9 did you see that 8 part 9 okay now we're gonna go over here and remember you got this legend right here voltage legend and the number is CNM803 which corresponds to this plug so now we just go over here and uh, let's verify some of these voltages all right on the uh, power on we got 8.9 volts on the uh, PWM blue which is uh, spelled BLU we got 8.9 volts on and off 8.9 volts and the ANA dim we got 3.6 volts now we got another legend right here and that is for this power to the LED strips and this first this first pin is 153 volts and we go by and check the rest of them of the other pins and we got no voltage that's because the backlights are off and we're not conducting voltage and current okay so now I'm going to power up the set. See the red light's going to go out. You're going to see our back lights just turned on. Let's revisit these voltages. Whoa, standby 8 volts, then went to 12.8 volts with the unit on. 12 12 part 12 part 8 volts with the unit on okay now let's go over here to power on 12 part 79 uh, PWM blue 12.79 on and off 12.79 and this last voltage that we had to 3 was this ANA dim wow it's 12 volts now okay so that's the difference in the on and off mode with this particular power supply and let's even go here look at that 173 volts let's go back over here here
which would be 251 and And we got our 130 here. So that means the lights are on. Everything is conducting. So we got to have that path. And it burns off some of the voltage. So that'll be that two difference. The two the difference in the two voltages. Remember, when it was the power was just off, you only had your 150. 50 something volts or something like that maybe 200 volts just sitting right here and when it's on well I, because these the rest of the pins read zero and now that it's on all the LED lights are on well you got another voltage over there which that's the one we just read okay so uh, basically that shows you the difference hopefully and when the set is off, what you should be looking for, which that's standing 8 volts and uh, whatever volts we got here, like 2-something, going here. And uh, what it should be once we turn the unit on, where everything go to 12, 12 volts, you know, 12 point something volts. So... When you have that going on, using this legend and that legend, well, that'll let you know that this power supply is okay, and maybe your problem, startup problem, with this being connected, could be something with your LED lights in the back, the LED strips. Okay, and the next thing we wanted to talk about and it's the final thing is part numbers. How to identify your part numbers. Okay, let's go right here. There's two part number strips on there. Actually, the one that we use to identify this part would be the long strip with the barcode at the bottom in which the strip is upside down on this particular video that'll be the model number of this particular set and right at the top part which you know it actually be the bottom when you turn it upside down that is the part number for this particular board now, a lot of people want to use the part numbers off that little strip over there to your left. That's not it. There's something dealing with the manufacturing process, I believe. But that's that won't cross this board to the correct board. You have to use that number that's on the barcode. Right here, this is the TCON board. And you see, there's two labels on there. The one with the barcode, that's the one you want to pull your part number from. Not the small one. It won't cross to a part. Okay. Now let's go here. Okay, now this is the part number and barcode on the power supply board. And you're going to have a lot of numbers on there, but the key thing is the part number begins with BN. A matter of fact, by being a power supply module, BN44 in most cases. So, these are the labels that you need to be looking for when you have to replace any of these parts. You want to go by the label with the barcode on them. 
And here's our FFC cable. It's upside down, but that is your actual, actual part number to replace this FS, FFC cable. And again, you got your BN, probably 96, and just for you to know, all of Samsung parts begins with a BN, and it'll end with some sort of alphabet. But on your boards, as a reminder again, your true part number to replace that part is on the label with the barcode. Okay, now this is the part number that's listed on an LED strip. And as you can see, there's no BN, nothing in front of that bottom number. That bottom number is the number of the part minus the BN 96 so in other words you put BN 96 in front of that number and you will have the part number for this particular strip why Samsung do it like that uh, I can't answer that but that's the way it is so remember when you're looking up a, up a part number on the LED strip, you see this QR code, that last set of numbers down there, add BN96 in front of them, and you'll have the part number for this particular part. Okay. With that being said now, I'm going to conclude this video. Uh, I hope you guys got a lot out of it, girls, everybody. Uh, remember to visit patchonestripe.com for an assortment of quality replacement parts. And if you don't see what you're looking for, be sure you hit me on that contact section on the site and I'll get right back with you because I have a lot of parts that I don't have in, I don't have in, in my inventory yet, my online inventory yet. And as far as plasma TV parts, I'm your guy. Brand new plasma TV parts. Don't, don't get rid of those plasmas. They're some nice TVs. Give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you haven't, please subscribe. Uh, we added a, something new to our videos, which is a donation button to uh, Patch One Stripe Technical Support. Because after all, guys, it takes a lot to set these things up. It takes a lot of time to respond to emails phone calls, and be nice, show the guys some love, okay, if you can, other than that, keep coming anyway, we want to help everybody, it's all good, uh, with that being said, patchonestripe.com, y'all know the word, we out of here.